sponsored by NordVPN. What is a photo not quite really a photo? That's a question I've had to mull over once again as I've used the camera of the Google Pixel 10 Pro XL. As someone who's used every single Pixel camera over the past decade, the most interesting new feature for me this time around is the new ProRes Zoom, where Google uses its AI magic to enable computationally enhanced zooming up to 100 times. And that has me feeling a little uneasy, because for the first time when you're taking a photo with the Pixel, generative AI is getting its grubby mitts on your pictures meaning that what you zoom into might not actually be there in reality, which of course raises some questions about what a photo even is in the age of AI cameras. So can you trust photos taken on a shiny new Pixel 10 Pro? And what does this mean for the often fraught relationship between pictures, especially phone camera pictures, and objective reality? Let's jump in. So let's start off with a quick Pixel primer. The Pixel 10 Pro and Pro XL haven't changed any of their camera hardware at all from last year's 9 Pros. Instead, the hardware that enables ProRes zoom at up to 100 times is the Tensor G5 processor. Tensor! <laughs> that helps power the model that makes this feature run locally right there on the phone. It's a bit different to the zoom enhanced feature of earlier Pixels, that's the cloud powered one that lives in the Google Photos app and lets you pinch to zoom in to get more detail after the fact. Also, crucially, it doesn't need an internet connection to work. It's the latest in a long line of image processing features on Pixel phones, from the earliest iterations of HDR Plus through to Night Sight and more recent AI toys like AdMe. It uses AI to infer what should be there and then draw it in, as opposed to truly resolving actual details at 30, 40 or even 100 times zoom level. If you're a critic, it's easy to call this out as a fake or a phony. Bony. And sure, you can easily see the limits of this feature. The simplest way to banish this illusion and turn Google's Cinderella carriage back into a pumpkin is to zoom in on distant text, where sometimes common banners like warning or caution might come out okay, but if it has to interpret finer text, you'll just get kind of a gobbly mess. One of the best things about owning a Pixel besides the camera is being first in line for Android updates. But there's more to digital security than just your security patch level. And that's where this video's sponsor comes in. NordVPN is the best VPN service for online security, and now you can get up to 77% off a two-year plan, plus three months for free. Nord is one of the fastest VPNs in the world, with speeds of up to 6700 megabits per second. It adds an extra layer of protection to your daily internet use by encrypting your traffic, shielding your online activity from hackers and snoopers. Especially useful if you travel or use public Wi-Fi a lot. And you can appear as if you're virtually anywhere in the world, with servers in over 126 locations. NordVPN comes with an integrated anti-malware tool and continuous dark web monitoring, which should help you know about any leaked credentials before the bad guys do. A single plan covers 10 devices with all major platforms supported, so head to nordvpn.com xda to get up to 77% off a two-year plan plus three months for free. Thanks to Nord for sponsoring, and now back to the video. For things that aren't text, though, the results can be shockingly good. The Pixel 9 Pro already punched above its weight in zoomed shots, and this is an extra incredibly impressive layer of detail on top of that. It's also not quite as extreme as the AI zoom feature on Honor's Magic 7 Pro, which comes with the additional disadvantage of needing to run in the cloud. It may be impressive, but that doesn't make it real or even necessarily accurate. The fur that is created in this image of a stuffed toy, for example, may or may not be there. There's no guarantee that those individual strands of hair actually exist. It's just an AI-generated approximation of a possible reality. But is this really any different to any of the other ways smartphones have been enhancing our photos over the past couple of decades? I mean, after all, there are plenty of examples you can point to. On Pixel cameras going back to 2019, dual exposure controls have allowed you to selectively raise or lower shadows or highlights. Many cameras include things like digital skin smoothing or digital makeup effects. Even something as basic as red eye reduction in old digital cameras involves selectively pruning and tweaking pixels. All of these things potentially can produce an image that doesn't match what your eye actually sees or what the camera sensor originally captured. And yet, for the most part, we've pretty much accepted them. The same too applies to portrait mode, a table stakes feature which every phone now includes. The bokeh here is not real. Sometimes neither is the lighting. It doesn't represent the reality of the photons hitting the lens. It is a fake. And more recently, Google's Add Me feature in the Pixel 9 Pro takes photo fakery to new heights, 
by letting you digitally insert yourself into shots where you're the photographer by handing off to a friend and then merging two photos after the fact, making for a pleasing but equally unreal image. So computers are already monkeying with our photos in a multitude of different ways. And that's an argument presented by OpenAI boss Sam Altman recently in an interview with journalist Cleo Abram. Your shots already aren't 100% real, so so what if AI wants to pick up where computational photography left off? You know, even like a photo you take out of your iPhone today, it's like mostly real, but it's a little not. There's like a lot of processing power between the photons captured by that camera sensor and the image you eventually see. But for me, there are a couple of key differences that make ProRes Zoom distinct and potentially more problematic than HDR Plus or Portrait Mode or even Add Me. Firstly, it's the AI painting the details over the top of your photo. That's as opposed to the situation with digital portrait or phony group shots where you as the photographer are in the driving seat. And that distinction, that a machine is holding the paintbrush, not a human, I think is a crucial detail which we will touch on a little bit later. Plus, ProRes Zoom is built into the camera app and handled as part of regular photo processing. You have no control of what it conjures up outside of what you pointed at and the act of enabling or disabling it. ProRes Zoom is straight up fabricating brand new details based on its training data as opposed to just massaging the image as it's captured. In contrast to face smoothing or virtual makeup where digital changes are limited and predictable, ProRes Zoom runs your photo in its entirety through a completely opaque process where anything and everything is open to manipulation. If you don't keep the unmodified original, then who knows whether the photo can even be considered real. Like, say you zoomed in with your pixel and captured a crime being committed, and only the ProRes Zoom version was able to restore critical details. Would it be admissible as evidence? Who even knows? I'm sure that will be tested in court at some point this decade. The way this technology works also results in a total lack of consistency from one shot to the next, which is something I also noticed from Honor's AI Zoom earlier in the year. Take a look at this white object here, the details of which completely change in five photos taken in quick succession. All five look like a reasonable approximation of reality, but these differences from one to the next reveal that they are all as bogus as each other. Another great example here where ice cream gets gobbled into at chia or something like that in two shots taken in quick succession. And there are numerous other inconsistencies to be spotted elsewhere between these two pictures. That's because Google's clanker camera is trying to construct a potential new reality based out of its black box of training data. It can produce entirely new, possibly totally imaginary details. It's not merely tinkering with the sharpness, highlights, lowlights, or colors of a true photo, or in the case of multi-frame photography, making decisions about how it combines multiple exposures into one image. No, it's taking a big old digital Sharpie and reinterpreting them wholesale. And yet none of that makes Google's new zoom feature inherently bad. In fact, in the right shot, the results produced by ProRes Zoom are thoroughly impressive. Like any photo manipulation technology, sometimes you get great results and sometimes it is very much a swing and a miss. The best way to give you an idea of how this shakes out is to simply show you, so let's get into it. ProRes Zoom probably works best with animals and still life, where there's a clear real world thing for it to zero in on. Here in this shot of a seagull in the 30 to 40 times range, it's able to construct details around the eye and bill and scrub away a bunch of noise that you'd see in the outline of the bird in the unprocessed image. Same too with this picture of a Shih Tzu peeking through a distant window. ProRes Zoom gives us texture detail in the hair, nose, eyes and mouth that are only hinted at in the raw image. Were they really there? Well, who knows, but ProRes Zoom conjures up a pleasant and detailed shot regardless. And this shot shows off the strengths and weaknesses of the Pixel's new zoom. Larger elements of text are restored and sharpened up, as are the railings in the foreground of the brickwork and window panes in the background, but the text in the back of the bus is actually less legible in the process shot where the AI garbles it up quite a bit. In some cases, you'll just notice ProRes Zoom just doing a better job filtering out noise from the signal. Take this shot of a swan, for example, where it's tough to point to any huge number of artificial details being introduced. Instead, you're just given the impression of much less noise in the image compared to before. At super long distance though, it's much more of a crapshoot. As we saw earlier, some of the fine details lack consistency from one shot to the next, as you'll see here around the top of the lighthouse. And again, the most glaring aberration is what it tends to do with fine text at levels of around 50 times or above. 
As real as the surrounding scenery may look, this really is a dead giveaway that AI has had its way with this photo. So the easy argument to make here is that this is imaging AI run amok, gone too far. That it produces fake photos and that in the process dilutes what a photograph even is. I get that argument and I am sympathetic to it. Alison Johnson of The Verge has a pretty good take on this where she says she might see even a heavily, heavily processed magazine photo as real, whereas an AI photo, however good it looks, might not meet that standard. And you could easily deploy that same argument against things like ProRes Zoom. It's a take that I do basically agree with. A photo, even a heavily manipulated magazine cover, is real to me because it's been changed through human creativity with knowable, demonstrable tools. That's very different to the opaque AI black box process that takes your long distance pixel photo of a bus or a goose and turns it into either a clear and realistic likeness or alternatively beakless nightmare fuel. Now, would I rather have this AI enhancement option than not? Sure, when it hits, it is thoroughly impressive. And when it misses, well, you still have the non-AI version that's saved simultaneously. But I do think it brings up, once again, the slightly uncomfortable question of what a photo even is in the age of AI. It's the same issue that raised its head last year when Samsung's moonshot camera was caught hallucinating craters into other large distance circular orbs. The company's response via EVP Patrick Chomey was to question whether any photo could truly be considered real. And the clanker king himself, Sam Altman, has similar thoughts on the realness or otherwise of digital images. We've accepted some gradual move from when it was like photons hitting the mm. film in a camera. If you go look at some video on TikTok, there's probably all sorts of video editing tools being used to make it better than we out look better. Yeah, exactly. So to extrapolate on that, very soon we'll probably be viewing AI zoom features, hallucinated appendages and all, as real enough in the same way that portrait mode shots are seen today. And as annoying as that may be to people like me, I do think Sam Altman is basically right about this. And look, if we want to get all philosophical about it, then having supposedly 100% real images of the people, things and events of our time is kind of a rarity in human history. Photography as we think of it today is barely a couple hundred years old. Even then, photo manipulation and fakery has been around almost as long as photography itself. An iconic 1860s era portrait of Abraham Lincoln was faked using the body of another 19th century American politician. And on a more dystopian note, in the early 20th century, Joseph Stalin famously had purged political rivals erased from official photographs. Humans have been monkeying with photos since the very beginning, whether through photo montages or painting over undesirables, or through more benign things like framing, lighting, choice of lenses, or exposure length. Even famous artworks are often subject to restoration after a few decades. The only real difference in the digital age is the democratization of this kind of capability. In the 21st century, anyone can pay 50 bucks a month to Adobe and craft masterfully faked photos. And with the Pixel 10 Pro XL, the camera does that digital enhancement for you. AI capabilities like ProRes Zoom are just the latest in that lineage. Perhaps the reason they make some of us feel a little uneasy is because they're built directly into the camera itself, or removing the more human side of the equation. And yet that's been the case since the very beginning of Pixel cameras thanks to HDR+. Even since the earliest days of the Pixel 1 and Pixel 2, HDR Plus removed some of the human element of photography and handed it off to the machines. Plus, if you've grown up with Snapchat filters that can make you look like an alien or a bunny rabbit and portrait shots that can bathe your face in fake studio lighting, then maybe this is just a natural extension of that. The key ingredient here, I think, is time. AI zoom features like ProRes Zoom may seem new and slightly scary now, but I suspect that won't last for long. Just as portrait mode has quickly been accepted into the tapestry of smartphone photography, I think there'll be an expectation pretty soon that when you take a zoom shot on a high-end phone, probably it's gonna be getting a helping hand from AI. And look, considering this is still a first-gen feature, I'm pretty excited to see what's to come in future generations, perhaps with larger image sensors and more sophisticated AI models. But let me know what you think in the comments. Is ProRes Zoom something you'd want to try out and use day to day? Is it the future of digital imaging or merely another nail in the coffin of real actual photography? Stick around and subscribe for more on the Pixel 10 Pro coming soon. Drop us a like or a comment if you had fun today. But for now, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.